Hey, blog her. I hope everyone's good. I'm here at home, home alone, as they like to say. Um, we're just waiting for Lauren to pop on. Lauren! Hi. Thank you. So, guys, Lauren is an amazing actor. She's on a wonderful show called Outlander. And we're here to talk about how she's used her platform for good, how she's raised her voice um, and brought like light to important issues. But, Lauren, first tell us about your show. It really has given you. Um, recognition and a platform where you have been able to start a podcast. So tell me how you, your path to Outlander and then how you started the podcast. Sure. Um, so the path to Outlander was very unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, I remember getting the brief through when you're auditioning for things and I got the brief through for Marcelli, the my character. Yeah. And I just remember it was like broke down as like outspoken badass daughter of Leary, who's sort of like the evil one of the whole show. Yeah. And then a photo of Nell, who plays Leary. Uh -huh. and my agent called me and the two of us went, right, so it's me. And we were like, <laughs> yeah, 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 like you're very right for it. So um, went through the whole process. I thought I'd totally mucked up the audition. I remember there was three of us all like in Scotland spending yeah. the day auditioning and I thought I'd really mucked it up. And then the next day... Why did you off. think you uh, mucked it up? Uh, because it had been a really stressful day getting to... The, I had to come from London and the airports all got shut down that day because of like various different things that had gone on. Yeah. So I ended up in Scotland with only about 10 minutes. Much like It was meant to be much more time. We had about 10 minutes to get in and out. And then I said all the lines wrong. I called the director a different name. Oh. Uh, I think I just like chatted and I was like oh my god I've just spoken at them and they probably think I'm a bit weird and I'm sort of a bit young and mad <laughs> and apparently I left the room I now know from Matt Roberts um, our producer yeah. that when I left the room he went right well that's our we've got her and then the next oh. day I got a call getting it so yeah. that's uh, amazing because you walked out of that room and you're like oh okay I did not get that <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I one time was on the phone crying to my parents, like, I did it, I mucked it up, I, like, I worked so hard and I didn't get it. And they were like, oh, God, again, she's not got something again. But I've been doing theatre for a really long time. Um, yeah. And so that was really my background. So when I walked onto Outlander, I was pretty green. I'd done a few bits of TV, but I was pretty green to it all. Um, but I was talking about this with someone recently that we were saying, yeah. theatre is, you're in a big family, you're in a huge community all the time with theatre. And it's yeah. rare that when you get on a TV show that that comes as well. Um, yeah. But Outlander, we really are like a whole big family. It's a big team of really amazing, supportive people. And yeah, it's been like the most wonderful journey to be able to start my career with something like this. Yeah. Um, and a show that so heavily promotes women and um, yeah. our voices and um, really tries their best to focus on that and be aware of it. And Something like Katrina Balfe this year becoming a producer was a really cool move yeah. uh, for them to make. So, yeah, I feel incredibly lucky to be allowed to do it. I don't quite know why I've been allowed, but it seems to be yeah. good, working out we're, well. We're, we're going to get more into your show a little later and the, the friendships and the support system you have there. Um, but first, let's talk about your podcast. That launched uh, just recently. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that came about um, and what you talked about it on it. Yeah, so the podcast, She's a Wreck came about because I'd always sort of sat on the idea of a podcast for quite a long time and I love podcasts and I always find a lot of comfort and education and humor in them even like really some of my darkest times I've spent on like four hour walks through okay. London just listening to podcasts so I had a real affiliation to them and I'd been sitting on an idea that I I'm a bit of a fiend for a recommendation I'm always asking people what to listen to what to watch and in my 20s, it kind of combined with realizing that loads of my, most of my artistic taste came from men. And all my favorite bands were men. All my favorite films were directed by men. All my favorite books probably were written, bar a few maybe. But it was fairly heavily male influenced. And I had just never considered that that would be something that might have affected my taste. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought it would be really cool to hear from some of the coolest women of our time now that women's voices are much more sort of everyone's keen to hear from them It'd be really cool to hear from some of the coolest women of our time about the albums films and books by women that have most influenced them yeah uh, also sort of like a 
cheeky way of me getting recommendations of like really amazing stuff by yeah. women and getting to chat to like really incredible women about it. So yeah. I yeah, launched it. I've been we've been producing it for about two months or so before lockdown. Just before just towards the end of last year, doing okay. lots of episodes um and interviewing people and then lockdown happened with all the crap that's happening in the world and um it just felt like the right time to launch and it's yeah. been incredible. It's been more it's been so much bigger than I could have expected. The support from fans and from people that I don't even know, people that didn't know me that now yeah. love it has been phenomenal. And it feels as though we're reaching people with something they think they were craving but maybe didn't realise that they were. Yeah. Um, and it's scratching a bit of a niche for people. And yeah. men and women alike, I've got some male friends who are like my biggest fans that message me every week excited about the new episodes and are asking about the second season and things so yeah and so i actually want to talk about the second season but before we do that um you know speaking of like support systems and women supporting women you had told me like a lot of your um podcast team like you're all women and then you mentioned too like on your show um you have a similar support system so tell me about those like friendships and support and how it helps you with your content and and trying new things sure um so yeah loads of the <clears throat> production side of the podcast were mainly women the editor and the boss of the company that was doing it and my stylist slash friend that just gave me her tips the whole time i did have one male friend who's just got great taste who was on every ear for it as well but mainly women and yeah on the show as well the sort of support network of that i feel is important because it was about reaching women and reaching sort of new angles that maybe hadn't been explored that I think it was important to me to check in with people and ask if this is something that they'd be interested in and what they'd be looking for because the yeah. whole time I was going I'm interested in this but there's no point if no one else cares so yeah. everyone was sort of had a good and also hearing from lots of diverse women from all different backgrounds and all different things saying like no that's something that I think needs to be heard or hasn't been heard from felt really important to me Just yeah like days I think it is I think you need to be really open minded to making sure that everyone's heard from as much yeah. as you can. Like really striving. I really, really was such a massive factor in making sure so many different voices were heard from. It just felt like that was that's what the way we need to go now and it should really be yeah. the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, which is which is rough because we talk a lot about it in the podcast where Things like a, a simple thing of asking people to come up with a film directed by a woman that has influenced them in their life was tough because actually There's so many of their favourite films aren't because women have not for a long time had the opportunity to do this sort of thing in the mainstream. Um, so it felt like it was moving forward and asking people to really think and expose in the right way. Yeah. Um, and then with, yeah, on the show, yeah, we've got an amazing network. Like Katrina... <laughs> is incredibly confident and incredibly smart. And she's sort of always like on set, she'll be on her phone reading a Guardian article or she'll be like sitting reading the news and, and I'll be sort of over her shoulder looking at what she's talking about. And then on every break- That's, how, like, that's how you read articles? No, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll end up sitting down on a break because cause we worked so much together last year as well, we'd sit on a break and it would be like, so, what's happening in the world and have you heard about this and have you heard about that and sort of her being already in a very exposed platform I guess yeah and saying it's like it's cool and it's the right thing to do to speak up when you feel you need to speak up on something that's right or wrong yeah um, and it's good to do that and have your own sense of self and your opinions and people aren't going to like it and that, sometimes that's fine but actually yeah not just sitting back and sort of letting the world pass by she's very she's very on it and i found that very inspiring it just gave me a lot of confidence to um say what i wanted to say and have confidence in educating myself and having my own opinions yeah. uh, without too much worry because i know it's such a cliche but just because you're in like an sort of entertainment industry doesn't mean you can't have a thought <laughs> exactly exactly and so you know one of the questions we just got actually was like, how do you choose your guests for your, your podcast? Do you get recommendations from friends? I know Katrina was your first episode. Yeah. But, you know, going forward, like, 
do you get recommendations from friends, from uh, people online? Because you have a wonderful fan base yeah. um, in Outlander. They're they're passionate and they're smart and they're feminist. And um, so I, I wonder, like, have uh, for the second season, especially with what's going on in the world right now, how are you going to be getting guests for that? Well, so started off uh, with like asking my friends to just mm -hmm. check that I could like get a few guests to start. And Kat was the first person I asked, and she, um, Christina Balf, and we literally were just sitting on a break, and I was like, so I've got this thing about a podcast. I think you'd be really good. You've got great <laughs> taste. You're really smart. Would you be up for it? And she was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Absolutely, straight away. No need to check in with anyone. It was just like a straight yes. And I think the fact that I had someone with such intelligence and sort of clout in the world saying it was something worth doing and that she would put her name on it as well, uh, really kicked it all off. And so that yeah. was really helpful. And um, I think with that's how it started. And then it kind of grew gradually. And it was a lot to do with people that I found really inspiring and interesting that maybe I've been following. Someone like Liv Little, who um, she's the founder uh, of Galdem, which is a magazine here for women of colour, non-binary women. Um, and it's all focusing towards that. And I've just sort of always been following her and thought she had um, been doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to her and it took a while for her to be able to be available, but it was kind of important for both of us that we made it happen at some point. Um, so it was a lot of like me reaching out to folk. There was like, I had a UN bomb disposal expert and that was once it had been, once it had come out and we'd had a few episodes, it was like a friend of a friend. Yeah, that was it, a mind blowing episode. That was, yeah. it was just, <laughs> She's yeah. no pun intended there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but she was uh, like a friend that's a documentary maker who said that she knew this person and that I should look into it. And so then we started talking and she said yes. And that was incredible to have someone from nothing to do with entertainment or anything like that doing an incredibly dangerous and meaningful job, really yeah. genuinely like changing the world in the right way. So a, a lot of the fans right now are asking questions, technical questions about your podcast. Like, what kind of equipment do you use? Is there a software you're using? Oh, like, yeah. yeah, they want to know because I think a lot of people want to start their own podcast. Now is the right time in the world. Um, yeah, so what do you I, suggest? Yeah, well, an easy way, if you want to start, I would say, like, maybe let's not, I won't get into, like, complete specifics of, like, further ahead, but starting out, it's really easy. You can literally just Zoom call people and record it. And there's ways, like, you. I would recommend Googling, like, though there are breakdowns you can get. I, I have a, had a production company that would be doing a lot of this for me, so I was very aware of what's happening, but wasn't physically doing some of it. So, recording-wise, you can literally just Zoom call people and record it and keep the audio files each yeah. and then pull them together in an edit and then like edit it all as a conversation. So you yep. need basic editing software, which you can use something like GarageBand if you've got a basic Mac. Yeah, you can do that or you can use uh, Premiere as well. Then you can edit the video together and just yeah. export the audio. Yeah, to get more complicated, like you need to start training yourself sort of to use it a bit more, but fully go for it. Like I, it's, I don't think it's too rough. And then basic sound design. I mean, if you're starting out and you're not bothered about the highest of quality just yet. You don't need to worry about a sound designer, but it can be helpful, like with soundtracking. I had a friend, me and a friend who's a musician, he composed a whole soundtrack for me. So we sat in a studio and like did it, like spent a day making a song, which is so cool, by the way. Like you should, I fairly recommend you do it if you can. If you guys made a song, that's nice. Yeah, like with two of us went away being like, oh my God, we should be musicians. That was what he is. <laughs> I was going, I should be a musician. That was fun. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and you're and you're pulling all of your sound in, and then like with edits, you're literally just like finding your time codes and snipping it out so that you're pulling stuff together. And um, it takes a bit of practice, and it is a skill that I had editors doing with me, but I was learning with them. Um, and then things like there's platforms like Entail are a platform, and Acast, and various different ones where you can be uploading your like projects, I guess, and then that puts it out everywhere. Um, so it's definitely doable to do, like on a small scale yourself, if you really wanted to, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I think right now we're also seeing like people are creating content, you know, just on Zoom and everything. So I would say like my piece of advice that I got from someone was go for uh, completion, not perfection. Yeah, um, that was great. 
Yeah, and, and Lauren, we talked about this. Like, you know, there must have been a moment when you started your show and your podcast where you're like, oh, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to do well. Yeah, I'm just yeah, like, so hard. How, you, how did you work through that? Well, first tell, tell us what your doubts were on mm-hmm. each of those projects and then how you got through it. Yes. Yeah, so, oh man, so many, so much. It was so hard at times. The thing that was hardest for me was the amount of people I wanted to ask, but only having a 10 episode series. So, and, and finding that it was like, a series is a really nice way to do it. It feels like mm-hmm. a real good round off and it's focused. Um, but having so many people I wanted and then having to figure out, like you get a lot of no's of people that aren't available to do it at the time. And it's really heartbreaking when they want to, but we just can't make it work. And it feels like like real potential and then it dies. Um, mm-hmm. But then you've got to hold on to that. Maybe one day that will change. Or one of the biggest things that someone told me when I started was like, don't like you're saying don't seek perfection with it they were like the right people will do it and the right people will be the ones that you end up with like you're looking at it at the end and go oh man those people really wanted to do it and yeah. were really right for it and that and, is, and you, that and you do awesome. mess up like i mean we talked about yeah. this in your first episode oh, with Katrina, I feel like they really forgot epic. they forgot to tell us what oh, yeah. what movie you were even talking about so yeah, tell, yeah, yeah. how do you handle that in post-production yeah so okay yeah so that was on the first episode of me and katrina we just got really excited about it all and it was really funny and we were in her house and we had our i had a sound guy with me recording it all and like we had the whole set up and we were just dead excited that it's just like the guinea pig episode it was all going ahead and then when it came to talking about the film we just like launched straight in because we'd both seen it and started talking about everything we loved about it and sort of analyzing it all and then in the once we'd finished recording I, about two episodes later when I was still recording, I'd done the same sort of thing. And the producer came to me and was like, I think what would really sing with these episodes is if you told people what the films were actually about before you start discussing them. And I was like, oh my God, no one's going to know what, like, what we're talking about if yeah. they don't actually know the premise yeah. of these films. And we don't want to give it away. So then it was about like problem solving, how you then snip in at the right moment some sort of little synopsis and like do you give it away that you forgot or do you just put it in but actually it felt quite right it felt like it's a really personal way of connecting with fans and people that it feels like you're lying to them if you don't just tell them what happened and actually i think people like the honesty and it seems to be yeah i appreciated that so lauren uh, basically so uh, any mistake you make in podcasting or video making or anything you can always fix it in editing (laughs) and post-production it's kind of magical um but you know Lauren, we've talked about like you have a very good uh, support base. You have great fans, but you also have to, uh, being a public figure, you have to manage online criticism. Mm-hmm. So, were you worried about that, like when you were creating your podcast, and especially right now in the world, people are looking um, for a specific type of content. We need to be talking about things that we haven't talked about before. Yeah. So, tell me something like uh, you had mentioned, like when you started Outlander, you got a lot of criticism before you even started, right? Uh, I know I didn't get a lot. I got the okay. comment oh, thing. It actually, do you know what? I actually quite liked it because it made a lot of sense why it happened. But when I first started, it was initially when the announcement was made, people seemed quite excited because I looked very like the character in their heads. They sort of, everyone seemed to think, oh, she's exactly what I kind of had imagined. Yeah. But when it, the show came out, the character was just such a nightmare of a person. She's so outspoken and troublemaking and uh, a total contrast to like the very good people of Outlander and these other characters. That I just got a lot of comments of people being like, she's a little brat. She's a nightmare. She's like the bitch of the series. And I was like, oh my God. But actually, kind Turned of- Turned out that's okay. Because <laughs> it kind of made sense. You're like, I kind of like that you all hate me. And now it's been really gratifying because she's grown so much as a character. And she's still got the bites, but yeah. it's much more, um, I guess, just grown up that people yeah. really loved it. And the most common message I get is, I hated you when you first came on, and now you're my favorite character. And I'm like, it's, okay, well, that's you're a good like, right? That's a heartwarming. <laughs> yeah. But things like, je- like criticism on me, yeah, the, like every, the, the whole Black Lives Matter movement at the moment that's been happening, it's felt really important that as a white person, not to in any way try and 
preach my message, which doesn't really isn't really a message that I have because it's not me, it's not my experience. It is about feeling a responsibility that if I have a platform trying to amplify black voices, trying to amplify, amplify women of color, people of color's voices as much as possible without sort of stepping on top of it. Yeah. And I have had criticism definitely of, of people, especially in America, not being an American, telling me to shut up about American issues because I'm a Brit um, and look after my own country first. But I sort of try and ignore that because it yeah. doesn't feel as though it's an American issue in an all uh, sort of encompassing thing. It feels. Like a, I think it's very much a huge, like a global issue. Yeah, that we should be talking about and should be um, supporting in a way as much as we can. And things like with the podcast, um, like someone like Liv Little, or I had two guests, Serafina Bay and um, um, Chinenye is as you do. Mm -hmm. They're incredible actors and black women and all of them, it felt really important before any of the Black Lives Matter to just have them on as people that I was interested in. It wasn't like a consideration of their race when I asked them to come on the podcast. I just loved what they did and yeah. felt like it was cool to amplify that. And so when people have sort of said, how do you feel you should be sort of changing your content? I wouldn't like to think I'd have to change too much. It would just be trying to continue to amplify in the way that yeah. it's right and trying, yeah. to, trying really hard to do the right thing. Yeah. In that, in that, a way, not I in feel, a process. You I know, feel I, like your, your big fan base um, and all the supporters and all the women watching right now, the content creators, if you guys have any suggestions of who Lauren should talk to in season two for She's a Wreck, absolutely. drop them on Twitter, drop them anywhere, you know, like, we yeah. just need to amplify everyone's voices right now. Yeah. And Lauren has such a great platform to do that. Um, I also wanted to talk about, you know, there's a power in the support of strangers. Um, and yes, like when you read comments online, all it takes is one negative one to like mess up your day. But mm. there is such value because there's such positivity out there too. Um, yeah. Can you remember a comment you got maybe around the podcast um that inspired you or has the podcast like has someone shared with you online like oh this is like made my day brought attention to something that i really care about yeah yeah yeah. the best thing about it was every week i had regular people like a loads of regular i don't like i remember seeing the same names dming me yeah um on the podcast and like on the podcast page as well as my own page and um, profile whatever you call it um and every week being like once again absolute like best bit of my day on a thursday oh my god i had no idea this person existed oh my god i'm gonna go and become a member of galdem like lives um company and magazine like knowing that people were actively doing something with it felt amazing like it felt like yeah. you were actually doing something that meant something and the positivity of it that's what i mean by it was bigger than i could have imagined because it seemed to have affected people and it, like it just was mad that like, every week someone yeah. is saying it was the best part of the day they're gonna go on and listen to this album they're gonna check out this woman that's the singer they're gonna go and read that book that someone yeah. this other like naomi shimada recommended some really incredible naomi shimada is an author and she yeah. recommended some really amazing books on activism and things and lots of people coming back going oh my god i'm gonna go and read these books and you just think like that's really cool that's really cool so if, that's what i mean about amplifying like yeah actually feeling like you're actively reaching people in a meaningful yeah. active way that's not just like an instagram post it yeah. is hopefully reaching yeah and you're amplifying women's voices which as you said it was it's hard to find films that were actually made by women um so yeah. i love i love that people will be suggesting because you know like every day we learn about new uh, amazing people that mm -hmm. just haven't had the platform or the amplification that they need so yeah. we have a few questions here. Um, one's a practical one mm -hmm. that says, what mic and headphones do you use outside of Zoom? Because I also recommend, um, you know, the, your computer audio isn't as great sometimes. So yeah. what, what mic would you recommend people get? Probably Rode mics, they're pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. There's varying different prices and scales, but I would just check out, like they'll describe on each one what sort of quality they're gonna give you and the sort of um, thing you can use it for. So I would just go on your price scale of like, get as good as you can, but you don't yeah. need to go too hard, but something with a guard as well, that means that your mouth isn't touching the, the mic. mic entirely. Cause like singers quite often will use something that will touch them, that their mouth can touch, but actually that's not useful. 
you don't want the spit back. If you yeah. know what I mean. Um, but we did, we had a couple of times where um, like the mics conked out in lockdown, like at the equipment. Oh. So I was using like just Apple, um, not even AirPods, like old Apple, yeah, old school ones, old school headphones. Um, with a little like not even the new square. Uh, oh, like the uh, round one in my laptop. Um, why do you still have this? It was actually what? fine. It was genuinely yeah. all good. Like if you can't get a mic, that's I wouldn't worry about that. Don't let that okay. stop you. Just use your Apple headphones. They're completely good. The headphone, the mic, it's actually quite good. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say road is probably the big one, but then you can scale down and it's not a massive issue. Um, yeah. But when we were in studios, it was all like big time mics, which I mean, it sounds amazing. They sound yeah. lovely. Sort of, sort yeah. of and you can try out different mics too. I mean, I would say just get started. Do it on Zoom. Do it on your computer. I would get started with like, have a good idea like don't i wouldn't worry too much about like what mic you're using over like how good your idea is how good okay. maybe, if you are having guests on who they are what the conversation is going to be like i'd always really plan the conversation and what i wanted to be asking people and then more often than not you don't end up having that conversation it'll go elsewhere and they'll take you on other things but i mean i heard fair and cotton um talking with scrubius pitt and um, who both have podcasts really amazing podcasts they're both uk and people and they I remember them when I was doing it talking about how the, it's really hard when you've got a guest that doesn't really want to talk or like it's a bit tricky and you've really yeah. got to then use your planning and, uh -huh. go that. and I luckily didn't have to really do that at all but it felt really good when you're starting out to have it sitting in front of you just in case yeah, yeah. So, someone wanted to know what if you um, want to talk about something on your podcast that's not really part of your brand mm -hmm. um, oh go for it yeah, okay. I, mean, I was talking to like a woman that works in Israel and Palestine in bombs, and then I mean that's nothing to do with anything I know anything about. I just did loads of research before speaking yeah. to her um, to understand what she was doing and try and, and and also it's not almost it's like not about you as much. It's sort of about them. Yeah, we're so trying to keep it um, on them, I suppose, and. Like even talking to like Ellie Rousseau and, and Will Fallis, she's a lead singer of like one of the world's biggest rock bands. I mean, I don't know what that's like. And that's really cool to talk to someone about something you don't know much about and hearing their side of it. I think that opens things up, opens your world up a lot more. And yeah. that was a big impetus in doing it as well. It was like sort of giving more female heroes, opening up the worlds of women a bit more to things they might not have otherwise been exposed to. Like the inside of it, if you know yeah. what I mean. The, not the sort of regular stuff you hear about. Um, but I don't think, often I mean, like, what is your brand? Like, I don't tend to focus on, like, my brand as such. I sort of yeah. just do stuff that I enjoy. Exactly. Because what's the, sort of, like, what are you doing? If you, you're, yeah. not gonna keep, you're not going to have uh, sort of consistent motivation if you're not yeah. um, enjoying and interested in what it is that you're doing. So... You have yeah, to feel absolutely. passionate about your projects, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say right now, um, again, like we've talked about, we're in a, a very interesting time in the world. Mm -hmm. So what you want to hear about, what someone wants to talk about, probably is an audience for that. And just, oh, you know, yeah. you be that platform. I think there's an audience for everything right now. Mm -hmm. And also how interesting to be someone talking about one thing and then totally contradict everyone and go and chat about something else. Like that's so interesting to have that like um, multitudes to yourself into what you're doing. I think that makes you a much more interesting artist, person, content creator, whatever it is. I don't yeah. think it needs to be you stick. I mean, I've talked a lot about this with people because I was freaking out about doing a podcast. Like halfway through the process of doing a podcast, it was so it's, there's so much work involved to do it well with so many people and and feeling like you're wanting to do the right thing and um really make something great yeah there was times where i was going i'm an actor like what am i doing this is not i'm not a host like i'm not someone i don't yeah. know a few people like i don't know about this subject or whatever were you, were you nervous to ask like you know i know you said you asked katrina to be on the first one did that take a lot of nerves for you to be like not with katrina i was like i think you'll like this is really exciting will you do it and so <laughs> she was like yeah i love it definitely mm -hmm. some people yeah like Ellie from Will Fallis, I was a huge fan of the band and we just had mutual friends and like managed to connect and I didn't actually think she'd say yes and then she, she came straight back and said yes, she was really up for it. And so that was kind of a good confidence boost that made me go, 
okay, like this has got this has got something. Like we'll keep going. And then if anything, quite often I'd get down on it, going, "Oh man, this is just not." I don't. Are people gonna like this? I just don't know. Yeah. If what? And then after every single time I recorded an episode, I came out elated how interesting and amazing yeah. these women are, and how important it felt to have their voices heard and being able to yeah. be a part of it. And it was dead exciting. So. So I think I think for our audience, just like go for it. You know, if yeah. people don't like it, they'll let you know. You can play oh, yeah. it. Like, there's no, especially right now where we all live at home and we Zoom and, yeah. you know, it's, it's like a great time for mistakes. Yeah. And um, nowadays, sort of, what are we in 2020? It's sort of like, just do whatever you, like, just do everything. Do it all. Yeah. <laughs> do it all. Just run the world. Yeah. Um, I, li I did like how you got some criticism to just stick to Britain. Um, that's like well, a that's big job for you. Yeah, like, no. You're in charge of Britain now. <laughs> that, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stick to your own country, and it was like, yeah. well, okay. I get, I get people sort of um, not wanting like celebrities to comment on their system, but it's sort of it, it isn't that. I feel that's a pretty basic sort of base way to. Look yeah, at it. Well, I think it's very dismissive. I, you know, you're all artists. Yeah. We're all um, humans. Uh, yeah, who it, are it's, no, we are not looking at our own country and only looking, and it's it's not the case at all. It just happens yeah. to be. And I would say because of social media, we all kind of live together now in yeah. this like, oh, virtual yeah. world. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what one piece of advice that you want to leave our audience with? We have about five minutes. Um, if they want to start a podcast, they think we've already said just go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there like a best piece of advice that you've gotten recently, um, whether it's for your show or for your podcast that you want to share? I think the biggest thing would just be to keep going with it, like to not. I for a while was really nervous to launch it. I re, I was like, no, it's, there's not. It's not the right time. It's not the right time. And everyone was going, it is the just do it. There is no right time, but now is the right time. Just go. And I remember hearing this thing about um, pandemic responses. And I was, I was a pandemic expert talking about um, how you respond to like world epidemics, world pandemics, and they were saying. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is wait and sort of experiment and see if something should work out. You have to just act and you have to just go. Um, and there will be problems and there will be fallouts. But you, the, the worst thing you can do is wait. And I like it's a strange analogy, but I, I really do think that's the case. Like, it, it, there's going to be stuff that you don't like about it. There's definitely going to be stuff that mucks up. But actually, everything. It was such a relief when it was done because I was like, oh, it was good. It was okay. Like it worked. Yeah. It was everything that went wrong, we fixed. Yeah. And well, so on that, like when, so two questions. When are you starting uh, season two, or at least planning for season two? And everyone is asking, and I, I know you don't know, when is out, when are you going to start filming Outlander season six? Never. It's never happening again. No. Um, we, so season two, we don't have a date yet. Work. I'm working on um, some live, I think we're going to try and do a live series where, I'm working for a company at the moment to do like ticketed events bit like this where people can actually like interactively be involved in watching the recording of it and being asked being able to ask the guest questions. Um so there might be some more outlander women to do with that. And um I'm working on that. So if people let me DM me if you're into that idea, if you like it, because if you don't, I won't do it. But yeah, uh, you guys, it's up it's up to you right now. You have so much yeah. power. Just yeah, tell me. I'd always um, wanted to do live events with it, yeah. but obviously right now we can't. So we're working on that. Um, there will be a series too. I just don't know when at the moment. Um, I kind of need a break, to be honest. It's been a really long process that for everyone, thank you so much for being a part of it, but I just need a bit of a break. That lockdown for me has not been a zen, lovely <laughs> holiday experience that it has seemingly been for some people, apart from obviously the horror of it all. Um, yeah. It's been a lot of work. So I'm having a break on that, but I'm then Outlander, we are starting again. We have been given information roughly of when it'll be, but I can't say. Um, um, we, are, we were we, like, don't worry, it's happening. Um, it's happening. Okay. Then we've got another, I'll have a BBC series coming out. Uh, I'll finish filming that this year and it'll be coming out. There's got nothing to do with Outlander or anything else. It's just another TV show. Yeah. Uh, so I know you can't say anything, but like, is it in within three months? Could you like blink twice? To what Outlander? Yeah, three no, months? I actually can't say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, don't get me fired. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Lauren, thank you so much. Um, please, guys, drop your uh, ideas for guests for her second season yeah. after she takes a little break, a little nap. She'll yeah. be back to it.
let her know about the live event series, uh, something like this for She's a Wreck. And if you have any recommendations from uh, women, uh, movies by women, and follow Lauren on Twitter and Instagram. She is awesome. Lauren, uh, thank you so much. Thank um, you. And everyone listen to the podcast as well if you haven't already. Everyone right. go listen to it. It's great. Just a little homework from yeah. Blog Hair. All yeah. right, Lauren. Yeah. Thank I'll you. talk to you later. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.